Aziz, light. Welcome back to Wet Coast Fab, and you might be wondering why I'm standing outside in the dark. Well, it's because of this. With these little mini bikes, you know, the headlight is a little bit more of a suggestion than actually putting out any really usable light. And because I'm boosting the speed of this bike, I'd like something that's got a little farther range down the trails than what the little incandescent bulb puts out. And the way I'm going to try and do that is with a replacement for the P15D light bulb with the equivalent LED bulb. I'm going to see if that's going to make a difference. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my mini bike pointed towards my van and I'm going to start it up with a fixed shutter setting on the camera and measure what kind of light it puts out. I'll experiment with the camera to find an appropriate ISO setting and I'll fix it at that so I have got a legitimate test between incandescent versus the LED bulb. So let's get to it. Let me show you why I think in my not so humble opinion it's a good idea to replace the stock incandescent bulb that came with your mini bike with the equivalent LED bulb on my workbench here. So the coil on the Coleman mini bike puts about 8 to 13 volts out depending on engine RPM. And these LED bulbs that I've bought off of Amazon are not polarity sensitive, meaning they don't have to be positive or negative or anything like that. You have to worry about when putting them into the sockets. And what I'm going to do is show you the difference in current draw between the LED bulb and the incandescent bulb, and you might be a little bit surprised. I'll set the voltage to about, you know, 10 volts, somewhere in the middle. 10 volts, nice median. LED is on full brightness, drawing, call it two tenths of an amp. That's super low current draw. Now if I switch this over to the incandescent bulb, you can see at 10 volts this bulb is drawing over two amps of current. Wow! So what does it all mean? Two things in my mind. One, you could add more LED lights to your mini bike if you wanted to without stressing the amount of electricity being generated by the engine. And two, that gives you a lot more current available for spark. Hopefully that translates into the engine running cleaner. Who knows? All I'm saying is that switching to LED gets you brighter light, uses less current. Those can't be bad things, right? So now on to switching the bulbs and I'll show you how to do that. It's so easy. So removing the light bulb in the headlight is pretty easy. There's just one Phillips head screw here. That's the one that's the cross. You have to remove it and then you will see that the front of the headlight just pops right out. Grab it from below about where that screw hole was and pop it right out. If you need a little bit more length to mess around with the bulb socket here, you can push the wire through the back of the headlight housing just like that and it gives you a bit more room. Pulling out the bulb, super easy. Just remove this rubber protective sleevey thingy and that's the bulb socket. You just push it in and then turn it and it'll pop right out and that's the bulb right there. Note that little detente there, that's kind of important because that's what indexes the bulb and the replacement bulb will have the same kind of thing. So the bulb literally just pops right out if I can actually get hold of it. And that's the incandescent bulb there. Putting the LED bulb in is just reversing the process. So remember that little detente I said? On the P15D light bulb, you'll see there's that little tang there and you just have to line it up, pop it right in. Also a thing to note is that two of these slots that the bulb socket slides into are closer together. They're not evenly spaced around the perimeter of the socket. So you just have to make sure you line those up. You'll see the top two there are closer together. Just pops right in. And then you just tighten it back up. Put the protective boot back on the socket. Putting the headlight lens back on the housing is pretty easy, but note that there's these two little bumps here. That means that to get it on, just line up the screw hole back where it was in the housing here, and you just put those up top in there first and push it on. Now let's see if she lights up.
Okay, so it works great. Uh, the strobing effect that you saw on the camera is actually just an artifact of the camera itself. To the human eye, at least my eyes, it was just a solid white light. What I'm going to do tonight when it gets dark is I'm going to take the bike and I'm going to put it right here where this tree is and I'm going to point it in the direction of my van down there and I'm going to see in the dark of night how much of that van I can see with the LED light now. So just got to wait a few hours. Holy smokes, that made a surprising difference. Just by swapping that bulb out, I had a lot more usable light. The headlight still points at a sucky angle at the ground and I'm gonna fix that as well and I'll show you how I do that. But just the bulb upgrade alone is worth it. You see a lot of flicker of the LED at low RPMs. That's just because the voltage generated is quite low at that point, but it's no big deal. And now tomorrow I'm gonna figure out how to stop the headlight from pointing into the ground. All right, I've thought about this headlight aiming issue overnight and I think I've come up with a solution. I am gonna modify this bracket just slightly to allow me to get more range tilting the headlight back. Even if I remove this top bolt on the headlight bracket, that doesn't give me much more range because the part of the bracket here just touches the headlight. So I'm gonna mark off some areas I'm gonna grind with my trusty little Dremel or a file or something. And that should allow me to tip the headlight back farther. But I gotta wonder, why would the Chongqing Hansong Science and Technology Industrial Company Limited of China want to limit the movement of the headlight to point so low? Or am I overthinking it? Yeah, that's probably it. Okay, so right here, the headlight housing just touches the bracket. This is a really crappy marker. You get the point. So I'm going to grind a little bit off here, maybe at about there. And the bolt, that's kind of like the stock position there. And I think I'm going to grind out a little bit more of these slots to round about there. Yeah, I think that'll work. Let's give it a try. That looks a lot better. Definitely more horizontal beam out of this thing. Now, I just have to wait a few hours for dark and test it out. So much better. That worked out great. Just those two simple little mods, uh, changing the mount of the headlight just a little bit by doing some grinding and shaping gives me a much higher beam instead of the damn thing pointing at the ground right in front of me, which does nobody any good, let alone the deer that are gonna cross my path at 60 mile an hour eventually. And just by throwing in an LED light bulb. Okay, back to daylight. While I'm a huge fan of what we do in the shadows, it's just a lot easier to get things done on my mini bike when it's not raining and it's daylight. And the last thing I wanna do this time out is make a little bit of an instrument panel off the handlebars here. So I have a small sheet of 16 gauge steel and what I'm gonna do is make a panel that ties into the four bolts that hold the handlebar on and just make sort of an elongated T-shape out front here and have it just canted up a little bit. And I think that'll be a nice little platform where I can take something like this tachometer and a GPS speedometer that I plan on building and just kind of having it up here out of the way. I thought about putting it on this side, but for one, the cables are in the way. And for two, you know, there's a non-zero chance I could come off this bike at speed. And while I don't plan on having any more kids, well, let's just say I want, I like things where they are. So I'm not going to put any sharp pieces of flat steel sticking out this way. 
Anyways, I'm going to take these caps off and I'm going to measure the bolt spacing and I'm going to draw out what I think I'm going to make and I'll do it in cardboard and that'll give you an idea what I think I'm going to do. Well, it looks like those are 83 millimeter on center and that is 39, so 83, 39. All right, a little bit of cardboard aided design and I've come up with this. I've got my hole marks marked out there. Everywhere there's a, uh, a dotted line, that's gonna be a fold because I'm gonna fold down the edges of the metal to give it some, some strength. And this fold here, it'll just be bent up a little bit like that. So it's a little bit of a tip up. And one of the side effects of doing this is actually gonna make a nice flat area here that I could stick something on. The bolts for the handlebars are just gonna be there. There'll be a bit of flat room here. Yeah, I think this is going to work out okay. Got it all trimmed out. I've got my template taped to the metal I've cut out and I'm just going to punch little mar witness marks through the paper where I need to drill. And there's the four holes I need to drill to mount the little panel on the triple tree. So I've drawn out my bend lines and I've made notches where I'm gonna have 45 as these bend over. And I'm gonna drill these holes and then see if I can pound these edges into submission. Let's go see if I mark these holes properly. Well, that's not good. <laughs> what have I done here? Ah, uh, that sucks. Well, I think I can still use this. Well, I gotta slot these a little bit. All right, I used an end mill to elongate the holes a little bit, and now they line up okay. It's the old adage of measure once and cut twice, right? Well, in this case, it was measure twice and drill once. That's not too bad at all. All these little hammer marks will disappear. I'm gonna use a heavy trim clad paint on this and that'll smooth it all out and it'll look pretty decent. It also, it also suits the look of the bike too. Now I just need to do a little bit of a bend here and do a test fit. Pretty much done, other than the painting. I'm gonna do a test fit now. I thought about welding the corners, but this is 16 gauge. I might have, it's a bit heavy. I probably should have gone with an 18 gauge. It's pretty tough to work. I thought 18 gauge would be a bit too floppy, but 16 is definitely way too heavy. It's, it's a beast of a plate. Not bad, not bad. This is my point of view from sitting on the bike. It looks like it's aligned pretty nice. You can barely even see the screw up I made with the holes and it's on there really strong. This is gonna be great. So I'm gonna move the tachometer on here somewhere. Maybe I can even put it right in here. That'd be a good spot. The cables are kind of in the way, uh, but it won't be a problem for long because I've got some plans for some of this stuff in an upcoming video. You'll have to check out the channel to see it. So I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. I've got some lighting now on the bike that works really well. I've got a little dash pad, dashboard, instrument cluster, whatever you want to call it ready to go for some instruments i'm gonna take it off and i'm gonna paint it i'm not gonna bore you with that detail there's no point in letting you watch paint dry pretty sure you would just switch to another channel if i did that anyways i hope you are enjoying the channel and if that's the case why not subscribe and tell your friends about it um, do me a favor spread it around help the channel to grow and it is starting to grow and i'm super excited and thank you guys for all that once i've got this painted and dried you'll see it in the next video I'm going to do some fun stuff with the carburetor on this engine, see what I can do to get a little more speed out of it. But you'll have to tune in for the next one. And speaking of that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.